Welcome, everyone, and uh, thank you very much for joining my webinar on Landstar Myopia, our professional solution for myopia management. Um, with the Landstar Myopia, we introduced a product that allows to establish myopia management as a service. And with this said, I have another administrative topic before I start in order to get in contact uh, with me, like asking questions, please use the F and A um, functionality of the Zoom meeting software. And depending on the amount of questions, uh, I will answer them directly after each subtopic or at the end of the presentation. I hope it works out for everyone. If not, just drop a message, even in the chat, if it wouldn't work, I go to collect these questions and address them afterwards. As I'm in the role of the moderator and the presenter, I'm happy uh, to introduce myself. My name is uh, Michael Rieger, and I'm working with Hark Stride uh, for almost two years now. And as a product manager, I'm responsible for our software, iSuite, uh, biometry, IOL calculation, and today I'm uh, more than happy to speak about myopia management. Before I start, I will give you a quick overview about the topics uh, covered during uh, this webinar. In the next few minutes, I will lose some words about myopia. Why does it become more and more important? Which therapeut uh, therapies we do have as of today? And what are the consequences of myopia in children? Because of the information I will provide you during the introduction of, my, of uh, myopia and myopia management, it will make perfectly sense to you why I will speak about our optical biometer later on. And last but not least, I will speak about uh, our myopia management solution. We are certain that uh, with the Lenster Myopia, we offer a tool that allows ICA specialists to provide myopia management as a service. When light rays hit the eye uh, and focus in front of the retina and thus project a blurred image on the retina, um, we speak about myopia. This happens if there's a mismatch between the refractive power of the eye components and its axial length. That's how myopia manifests in terms of our architecture of the eye. So let's have a look at risk factors or causes uh, that favor myopia. The first one is genetics. For example, the prevalence of becoming myopic is considerable uh, higher in Asia, for example. However, also living conditions play a role and might be even more important when it comes to the development of the eye and um, the eye becoming myopic. The genetic controls how strong the eye influences is influenced by the living conditions itself. And as an example, uh, Johannes Kepler stated in the 16th century uh, that myopia is more prevalent in students, which was also proven uh, again in 2013, uh, several hundred years later by Fairhof in another study. Um, I wrote here that also that the optical system can be seen as a risk factor. What I mean by the optical system is the control loop, which is influenced by environment uh, by the environment and potentially directly impacts the eye growth. It has been shown in the past that the retina adapts the thickness of the sclera in accordance uh, with the sign, depending on the amatropia. And that is even the case after cutting through the optical nerve, which was proven by Sigrid Dieter. Uh, this is also known, uh, it is also known that amatropization is regulated by the peripheral uh, retina uh, to a high extent and not only uh, the phobia as people agreed on uh, previously. Overall, there are more risk factors that haven't been revealed yet. As you might all know, myopia uh, in children is a very popular topic. It's very popular in research. It's uh, also popular in industry currently. Uh, so let's see what we will find out about risk factors in the upcoming years. So next, what about the prevalence of myopia. The figures here uh, given may differ from publication to publication, but the trend is clear. It is apparent that myopia is becoming more and more prevalent in the population. And all you have seen, uh, all you all have seen these numbers already, but I want to point out that the prevalence of myopia is increasing. And in the year 2050, 50% 50 of the world's population will be myopic. At least these are the assumptions of today. And if you see, I mentioned genetics earlier, where we have Asia, which starts, which is already there with beyond 50%, they go to over 65%. But 
but we also have the United States and Europe uh, just close by. The layman now asks himself, why is uh, it worth considering it even? Because this can be corrected quite easily. This is indeed true, and there will be no shortage of optician stores or eyeglasses or eyeglass frames in 2050. However, it is the drastically increased likelihood uh, of late effects such as glaucoma uh, or retinal detachment, which can be associated with myopia and even high myopia. So you can see here, the higher the myopia, the, likely the likelihood increases um, drastically, for example, for myopia, myopic macular degeneration. Unfortunately, there's no uh, therapy to date that can completely stop myopia in children. However, there are ways to slow down its progression. There is the possibility to use glasses or contact lenses. And among the optical interventions, glasses have the advantage of being easier to put on and therefore easier to accept. And on the other hand, they are also possibly cheaper. In several studies, it also has been shown that multifocal soft contacts have been uh, all have a positive influence on myopia progression and therefore excellent prolongation. Autokeratology uh, could uh, has been shown to be have a positive impact or effect on the axial length. So therefore, uh, it was seen that it slows down the axial length change. The peripheral um, the, and therefore the the peripheral refraction uh, was held responsible. Um, atropine is a possibility from pharmacology to reduce the eye growth. There's also a controversy about uh, optimal dosage in pharmacological control. And furthermore, there are also studies stating about possibilities of using therapies to lower the intraocular pressure. But also the change of the environmental factors uh, can take or ha can have an influence on the myopia progression, for example, uh, the duration of exposure to sunlight, or more generally, the time spent outdoors. And also here, there are some questions marks, or so some question marks remain, where the effect comes from. Is it the light intensity, or is it the components of the light, or is it the components of the light? So you see, the therapy possibilities for myopia and children will keep us busy also in the, in the future. Next, I would like to discuss the components of myopia management, which have been defined by the International Myopia Institute. There, these, these are to identify the risk factors, uh, for example, the existing myopia of the parents, the awareness of myopia must be raised through education of the parents, for example, and appropriate interventions must be implemented and appropriate in the sense of understanding the initial situation and the patient's life situation or the patient's life situation which should be taken into account for the proactive act, uh, act, action why because the early detection paired with the proactive measurement um, significantly reduces myopia progression here on the right side i uh, mentioned two sentences from the managing myopia uh, this is a board of people from the AOA, the AAO, and the ASCO, which states that there should be an examination for the first time between three and five years, and there should be an annual examination for kids and or for uh, children until the age of 18. In order to detect the onset of myopia in children, various risk factors must be considered. And until now, one of the best was the determination of the refractive error or the spherical equivalent. In the year 2014, a single stage model appeared that predicted an increased risk of uh, becoming myopic if uh, children under 10 years are below minus 0 0.5 diopters. In 2015, there was another multi stage model that was published predicting that children which are less hyperopic than. Uh, indicated in this table, for example, between seven and eight years, uh, smaller than 0.5 diopters, um, there's a probability of greater than 80% that the kid is becoming myopic at the age of, 30, of 13. Since 2016 and 17, there are now uh, also percentile curves, so axial length growth curves, which allow similar predictions using the axial length. 
And we already know these representations from grow curves given uh, or used in child development. The data published by Didemann et al. Uh, allowed to predict uh, the myopia risk of, of children by the axial length in relation to the age of the patient. These data are based on a cohort uh, of European children. The F uh, et al. published grow curves for Asian uh, children just two years later. And who and uh, research colleagues published a study a few months ago uh, in which information about the time of the onset uh, of myopia can be used to predict the refractive error and even the axial length in the future, so in the later age of the patient. So as you can see, there's a lot of research and publication going on, not only in the treatment options, but also in the detection and uh, prediction models. The assessment of myopia progression uh, has historically been performed using refraction alone and refraction was and partially still is considered the most important part of myopia detection. And however, the repeatability of these measurements might uh, be insufficient and the determination becomes very difficult uh, during a therapy uh, with autocaratology or atropine. However, New guidelines indicate that the determination of the axial length should be an important part of the myopia progression assessment. This is also because the axial length is considered to be the largest contributor uh, to the refractive error, but does not always correlate with it in the same degree. As example, um, in which the refractive error determination was not sufficient, atropine studies have been shown that uh, in which the correlation between refractive error and the eye length or the axial length is not always given. The grow curves of Tiedemann and Dieth uh, just mentioned allow for the first time to relate the axial length and the age of myopia probability of the patient. With the determination of the axial length uh, or while the determination of the axial length is already standard in clinical studies, it is currently only suggested for everyday myopia management. And I just made a small list here for those of you based in the European Union, um, the BVA or the DOG might uh, ring a bell. They stated it there that um, axial length me uh, measurements should be part of the myopia management session. There's also more international guidelines like the International Myopia Institute, uh, the myopia management guidelines, and the one recently established by the board of the members of the AOA and AAO. So I hope that uh, in the previous slides, I was able to present uh, you why the axial length should be considered as an important measure in myopia management. Um, there's an other webinar by Dr. Thomas Allen next Monday. He's very active in myopia management since many years. And if you like uh, to hear more about myopia management, make just sure you won't miss it. I quickly go to introduce our optical biometer, the Landstar 900, um, which allows to determine numerous biometric parameters. We have here, for example, the axial length, we have the lens thickness, the keratometry, um, or even pupillometry. And we have uh, a stripped down version, which allows for most to have the axial length there for our myopia management solution. And why did I tell you about our optical biometer really quickly? Because it's an important factor or important part of our myopia management solution, the Lenster myopia. It consists of the hardware, so the biometer and our software solution. Now I would like to guide you through our software, our ISMIT myopia software, and briefly present you the possibilities you have uh, or the software offers today. The myopia software itself is divided into four sections. is the refraction, the biometry, the environment, and the myopia report. If you go into the first one, the refraction. So the first thing you do is you enter or the data get entered. So you have there's the possibility to enter the method the data were um, measured. Was it on the cycle or not? So you can enter the sphere, the cylinder, and the axis. And once these data have been added or added into our software, what you get is this kind of graph. So you see on the y-axis the spherical equivalent and on the x-axis the age of the patient. 
And as I've given in this example, the patient in the age of almost seven years has already minus 0.5 diopters. So what we provide with our software is a prediction curve of how the spherical equivalent would change over time until the adulthood of the child. So it might be too, uh, too small for you to read, but here is written untreated and untreated means it's no, there's no treatment ongoing and this would um, result in minus 7.1 diopters. The, 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 the other curves here show the projections for different treatments. We have here, for example, atropine or auto -K, and you see that you get a uh, slowdown of the myopia progression with these. If, you, if the patient is now followed for a longer time, and here it's almost six years along the myopia management or session, then uh, this is what you see in our software. So you have in blue the actual refraction uh, measures of the patient. You have overlaid this, uh, like in blue, the different uh, treatments, like you have atropine 0.05, and then there was later on a change to atropine 0.05%. And still, what we provide during the treatment is the possibility to show how would the treatment or how would the projection look like if there would be no treatment. So it would end up at minus seven diopters or how it um, is projected until the adulthood uh, for atropine, so for the ongoing treatment. So where does this corpse come from? Basically, we have here a list of different treatments and these treatments can be entered by the user. They can, they can be removed or you can add new ones. There can be combination therapies added, for example, between atropine and autocaratology. And then these uh, efficiency values can be adopted accordingly. So if there's a study coming out telling this has this, uh, this efficiency number, this data can be directly added into our software. Next is the biometry section. And this is basically our, I copied here, uh, basically a view on a measurement with our LandStar. And what you see is here, the different measurements. We provide uh, information like the axial length or the uh, keratometry readings. And once you import these settings into the software, so once we have them in there, you get a graph which shows on the Y axis, the axial length and on the x-axis, again, the age of the patient, exactly like shown in the refraction section. And this data are now overlaid with these curves that presented you earlier from Tiedemann, for example. And what these curves do, or I quickly go through it because I explained it already, is that you, if you see that this patient in the age of six to seven has already an axial length of 22 millimeter, there's a likelihood of 33% for this patient to become myopic in adult age. Again, after there have been several years um, in myopia management, you have this data where you directly see the measurements of the patient over all these years and how these uh, measurements correlate with the st study data provided um, by um, Tiedemann and his colleagues. And I don't want to go too much into detail here because this will, will be covered in the uh, webinar on Monday. But what you can see here or what these curves allow is to see if the treatment is really sufficient enough to slow down the progression of myopia. Because what you want is not that the eye still continues to grow like a uh, myopic eye, even though you're trying to slow down its um, axial length change. Here uh, is an other overlay of axial length reference curves. They are provided by Dr. Michael Berci, uh, who will also have a talk um, together with, with Michael Wiss on the 25th of May. Um, basically what you see here is a meta-analysis of 16 studies. Uh, for example, here we have myopic Caucasian eyes. You see here it continues to grow after uh, in the older stage of the patient while you have the Caucasian emetropic eye where you see a slowdown in uh, axial length growth um, with the age. And what you can see, just quickly mentioned, is that the axial length growth of the patient is more, more likely following the one of an emetropic eye. Where do they, or how do we get these curves into our software? 
we have here the possibility to add them on the go. So this, soft, this software is quite um, customizable. You can add it in a Microsoft Excel-like format where basically um, the label is given, the age is given and the axial length for this age. And then these curves are drawn in our software. So it's really easy to import new curves. So if you are from a region like um, Asia where there are especially the, the curves provided by DF, uh, these curves can be directly integrated into our software. And if there's a new study tomorrow, if there's a refined or if there's refined study, study data available from the Medical, uh, Medical Institute of, uh, of Rotterdam, then this data can be directly uh, imported in our software as well. The next part is the environment. So this is, or has to be seen as a small questionnaire where basically we ask about my, the, my, uh, how many of the parents are myopic, the age of myopia, so when was the myopia onset, uh, the time spent in reading or near work, and the time spent outside. And while the first two are given, so they are somehow the living conditions and genetics, because even though the child would like to uh, uh, exchange the parents at some point, uh, uh, at some point during, uh, until getting to the age of 18, these are given factors and they don't change over time. Also like the age of myopia. Once the myopia, uh, the myopia was detected in the age of six, this does not change anymore. However, how can now the parents contribute? They can contribute via the time spent in reading, via the time spent near work, and also via the time spent of having the kids outside. And this can be seen in this uh, example visualization here, where basically these factors like the myopic parents, the age of myopia, these are given factors that don't change over time. However, it can show how the parents can really help to slow down the progression of myopia. There is no quantitative measure currently, so we cannot correlate uh, diopter values or axial length change with, for example, time spent outside. So this is why we just provide a qualitative measure. There's no study data currently available. However, what can be seen and what this graph shows is that with the impact of what the parents can help with is with the time spent in near work and the time spent outside. And this is really how they can positively impact the um, myopia progression. The different questions provided here um, can be also completely customized. They can be changed, they can be added new ones, they can be even removed, um, and even their weight can be um, changed. So the next point is the myopia report. And here, just to start with, this report is completely customizable. So any word can be changed also, the um, pictures inside or similar things, it, it's completely customizable. And how does such a myopia report look like? Is on the first page, there are the patient data will provide the biometric uh, values like refraction and axial length. On the next page, we go through exactly the same visualizations I just showed you. It's the um, progression of the refraction of the axial length over time. It's also the trend visualization of the environment where, um, of the environment risk factors, and we list the current treatments and also an explanation of the ongoing treatment. So you can provide, or the ICA specialist can provide information about the ongoing treatment, about side effects. So the parents can really consult this myopia report. Um, it can be given uh, the it can be given home with them or sent via email. And on the following pages, we have overall information, exactly what I provided you in the beginning, a small introduction to the topic of myopia and myopia management. And this uh, information are all combined in our myopia report. So where do all this data come from? I just want to sum up quickly where this data uh, coming from. The refraction data can be imported from, uh, for example, a refractometer. These values can be imported directly into our software or manual input of the refract, uh, refraction data is also possible. The biometry data come from our LENSTAR um, and the answers to the questions, these are 
worked out together with the parents during the myopia management session. And I've shown you this slide already. I just want to come back to the components of the myopia, of myopia management. Uh, identify risk factors. This is exactly where our software can help the eye care specialist because of the questionnaire we provide. And not only the different questions that um, the eye care specialist can ask it also, but also the trend visualization of these questions. Additionally, uh, it's important to attract attention and we really think with the visualization of the uh, progression of the refractive error and the axial length, we can really provide a, re a good take home message for the parents in, uh, in the myopia report where we combine all this information together with the trend visualization of the environmental risk factors. And this is really helpful tool to educate the parents if they're more interested. I mean, I was part of such a uh, myopia management session once and really the parents at this very moment when the uh, child gets measured, there's a measurement going on, they are not really following the instructions of the ICA specialist and this myopia report really helps to um, deliver this information. However, the appropriate intervention and the proactive measures, these two things, they still uh, remain with the ICA specialist. At this point, uh, I would like to say that our myopia management solution was developed in close cooperation with myopia care. These two gentlemen, uh, Mr. Pascal Blas and Dr. Thomas Eller, may already be known by some of you. I just do, uh, want to point out uh, that Dr. Thomas Eller is presenting on Monday. Uh, so if you are interested in the topic and you may and you may be even more interested after my talk, you're more than welcome to join us on Monday. So thank you very much. I am here now for any questions. I see that we have two questions in the chat already. So I will just start with the first one. How do you, the first question is, how do you only show the projection of one treatment? Um, this is basically while you are in a current treatment. So if there's a treatment going on, we only show the projection for the ongoing treatment. But even if you are in an ongoing treatment, you have the possibility to switch to all the treatments. So if you want to have an overview or if the patient comes or if the parents of the patient come to you and say, oh, I want to switch from spectacles to contacts or vice versa, there is the possibility to show all the different treatments, even while you are in an active treatment, just to make the parents understand with this visualization of the different treatments, what would be the impact? Do we expect a better outcome? Do we, do we expect a worse outcome? So this also holds for atropine treatment. So atropine has really ha sometimes heavy side effects. So maybe parents decide not to have uh, their kids uh, treated with atropine. And then, you and then the eye care specialist has really the possibility with this tool to show them what is the impact if I switch from atro atropine to autocardiology or the, or, the, or the other way around? And with this tool, we really have this possibility. The other question is, um, if there are new studies coming out, if uh, Hux Triad is adding them or the doctors have to add them manually, there we will provide regular updates if there are new studies available. However, if there are ICA specialists or doctors which are really cracks in their field, so in myopia management, they can do it by themselves. They have the possibility to, to change these settings and even to provide us with this data or to provide it on their own website to help colleagues to have the latest information also available in their software. So these two possibilities are there. We have uh, a system there to import and export these templates quite easily. Can just... change to the software so that maybe I can answer questions directly there. So.
just share my screen again. So now you see basically the software. Here's the myopia report I just mentioned before. And this was I just mentioned before is that you can switch here back and forth and show the different different treatments even while you're in an active treatment, for example. I got just a refined question um, about only showing one treatment at a time, um, even while you're not in an active treatment. Currently, this is not possible that you only pick one and then you only show this one. Uh, we plan to have this like overlay function in uh, a future release, which will come out uh, later this year, so that you only provide really this information which uh, you want to show. But also, um, if a treatment should not be shown at all, you have the possibility to remove it here from the section or from these settings. And then these treatments are not shown at all. So there you're really flexible to um, to adjust the software to exactly to your needs. So you're very, really welcome. There's another question. Um, exactly, is the old patient information automatically transferred and is it compatible with updated research data? Um, I just quickly jump here to these curves. The, this data, these axial, man, uh, axial length measurements, you have them stored in the software. And if there are other axial length data, for example, available, they just overlay to the measurements. So even if there's an update to the software, so to the, to the, to the reference curves, for example, in the axial length uh, measurement, then it does not have an influence on uh, the actual measured data. So this is no problem at all. And I just want to show you quickly in the settings. Uh, we also have, to, this is what I meant before, how to get these settings in and out of our software. You have here the possibility to import these settings. So and by import, I mean, there is the report, like you see here, there are the treatment options, there are the environmental factors. So the questionnaire, so you can import the entire package or only parts of it and there are the biometry reference lines. And these are just simple zip files and you can just uh, put it on the website. We will have the updated version of these files available on our websites. So this should be rather easy to have it exchanged without having a technician coming uh, to the site. So I hope I did, I, I made a good I provided a good answer for this question. I'm just checking. Is there always anything? Okay, yeah. Are there any more questions? Just as a side note, because I just see that I did not mention it in my presentation. We have here in the bottom, but this is also something which can be hidden if it makes it too complicated for the user. And also if the ICA specialist has to explain himself of the parents, I mean, you want to have it as easy as possible, then you have the chance to just remove this view of this data. But what are these data for? We have here the absolute values of refraction shown over the time and also the relative ones, because as I've presented, there are uh, one-step models, there are multi-step models, which just rely on the information, what should be the refractive state of the patient at a certain age. So you can directly read it from here. And there are also studies speaking about what should be the relative change over a certain amount of time. And with this overview, we did, I think, quite a nice job to provide this information uh, quite easily. The same thing, uh, holds for the axial length measures where we have the absolute values on the left, the relative values on the right. And what you see here is, for example, an increase by 0.4 millimeter after between the first and the second measurement and so on. And then um, you see just these are, for example, numbers. If there's one year between the measurements, you would say, okay, in one year, the eye should grow about a certain factor. With these relative values, you really have the chance to follow this up. 
And for the myopia probability, which is given from the um, publication from Tiedemann and the research colleagues, you can see the probability of becoming myopic, which was from the beginning on um, 38% for, for one eye and 53. Then it increased drastically because the, you, there was a percentile jump. And later on during the treatment, you see only a slow progression. So uh, a slow down of the progression. So there's only a change, relative change of 2%. And then treating with atropine 0.05%, there is even a, uh, a reduction of, prob of the probability and this is exactly what you want to reach. You don't want to follow or the axial length growth should not be in accordance with one of these um, percentile curves. Just check if there's another question available. For now, not. Just one comment that it was helpful and you received the lens, the myopia yesterday. That's uh, really nice to hear. That's great. If you have any questions, I mean, just, uh, I'm always here to answer questions. There will be more webinars coming this month about myopia. Um, please feel free to join. I mean, there's a lot to learn. Thank you very much. And if there are no more questions, just uh, give it another 30 seconds. Otherwise, I would say we could close this session. Just got the information that there are questions in the chat. Give me a second to find out how to show these questions. Okay, I see more questions now in the chat. Give me one second to read them. Um, so there's one question about what are the advantages of this instrument compared to the competitors like, like Topcon or Oculus? I can start with uh, the one of Topcon. I'm quite sure you re relate to the Topcon Maya or to the Aladdin. Um, there for myopia management, for both devices, there is no dedicated software for myopia management. From, to my knowledge, all you get from these uh, devices is the trend of the axial length over time. Uh, and there's no myopia report whatsoever behind it. So this is not quite there where we are with our software currently, I would say. Of course, maybe I'm a little bit biased. I'm really sorry for that. Um, the comparison uh, between the uh, lens the myopia and the Oculus device, for example, um, there I didn't see in their presentations or from what they provided that their software is that flexible that you can really customize the refraction uh, projection course, which they don't have at all. There you also can not change the axial length grow course where we are quite customizable and also the report where we can change any word uh, within this report. Just um, checking if there are more questions. And just one word more um, about the comparison to the Oculus Myopia Master. Um, I think that we have compared to them a really, really, really uh, attractive price point. So I think I went through all these questions. So if there are no more questions, I say thank you 
very much for joining. Please join the following um, webinars on myopia in these months. And I'm looking forward to seeing you there. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a wonderful evening.